Welcome to today's Daily Walk in Wisdom. We're in the Song of Songs. I'm going to be reading, reading from chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Pleasing is the fragrance of your perfume. Your name is like perfume poured out. Therefore the virgins do love you. Draw me and we will run after you. Draw me. There are many things in life that draw us. Ambition, materialism, pleasure. These all draw upon the flesh. Only the king can draw our spirit. Jesus said, no man comes to the Father, sorry, no man comes to me except the Father draw him. The Shulamite knows that we become what we are drawn towards, what we submit to, what we seek after. Spirit gives birth to spirit, and flesh gives birth to flesh. Therefore, the virgins do love you. Draw me, and we will run after thee. David tells us that the virgins shall be brought to the king. He says that in the Psalms. The virgins are those who are pure in heart. For the pure in heart shall see God. And so those with pure motives and purified desire for God find themselves responding positively to the fragrances of his perfumes. When people get caught up in cults and alternate religions, such as New Age or Buddhism and so many of the uh, strange religions that are roaming around nowadays where everybody is inventing their own spirituality and their own faith and their own truth. Uh, quite often people wind up there in these things because of impure motives. The enemy attempts to seduce us using our innate religious motivation, using it against us because every person in the world is motivated towards having faith in God. That is part of our makeup, part of how God has made us. All men receive the measure of faith. But what the enemy tries to do is to, is to get us to be disturbed, to somehow uh, use us, Somehow he uses our religious leanings against us. And so we end up being brainwashed with false arguments and pride and, and activity that is disobedient to God. Um, capturing our flesh, seducing the flesh, and thereby imprisoning us in cultic strongholds. There are many indicators that religious fervor has been stirred more by a cultic spirit than by pure motive. Um, if you fool around with the nature of Christ or if you fool around with the nature of man and think that people are somehow sinless in our natural state, if you fool around with the nature of salvation, uh, these are signs that you're involving yourself in a cultic tendency. Uh, the proclivity within cults is towards cloning people, so everybody looks the same, dresses the same, talks the same. That's evidence of a cultic tendency. Uh, a biased and limited scriptural knowledge. Cults operate with that. Uh, the elevation of personality and the elevation of extra biblical writings 
to a near biblical status. Or there might be alterations of scripture that aid a religious bias, a particular religious bias by altering words within scripture and then presenting that as the Bible. Um, if there's excessive legalism or if there are flesh attractions, these are indications that there is cultic influence and not Christian influence or the, uh, or the influence of the church that Jesus is building. And a religious fervor can look very similar to spirit-motivated zeal, but it burns on fleshly motives rather than the fire of God and will fight for an ideal or a system rather than running after Jesus. Hebrews tells us to make every effort to enter rest. A cult has no rest. And then we're told, for the word of God is living and active and full of power, and it's sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So we have to be willing to have our motives tested and made right so that we can live beyond the seductions of the enemy and have a purity that can see God. The word virgins in our passage from Solomon, from the Song of Songs, uh, it also means hidden ones. Those whose lives are hidden with Christ in God are the ones who are in God and who can see God. There is an exclusive quality to walking with God. Former companions and interests may not be able to walk with you because they are not virgins. Only the virgins are running after the king. The hidden aspect of the God seeker's life is manifest in your personal prayer time. Jesus said, enter your closet and when you shut the door, Pray to your Father in secret. There is a place in God where you go alone. No one, not even your closest friend, can go there with you. It is where you see God face to face and receive the kisses of his mouth. It says, draw me and we will run after thee. The Shulamite wants to be drawn and she wants to run with the virgins who also love the king. And the Shulamite unfolds a powerful secret that if we are drawn to him, then we will run. And not, it's not just me running on my own, but we will run. And so the plural indicates that if she comes under the influence of the king, then the overflow generated will have the same effect in others that it has had in her. In other words, whatever God is doing in your life will radiate to the lives or cascade over unto the lives of those around you. And running articulates that once Jesus has drawn us, that there will be an increase in our desire for him and a sense of urgency to live for him. Jesus said, zeal for your house consumes me. And running also indicates that his drawing power generates a pursuing power in us. And it operates much like a magnetic force or magnetic attraction where it will appear as though we are using our energy to try to move and do things for God and our motivation to seek God. But in fact, all of our momentum originates from heaven. All of our momentum comes because God is drawing us to him and we are like iron filings being drawn to God who is the, the, the awesome uh, divine magnetic attraction that is drawing us to him. Uh, we're like Elijah who we can run faster than horse-drawn chariots when the hand of the Lord is upon us. So in order for us to run our race effectively, 
there are certain things that need to be established. We need to make sure that every distraction is discarded. We must make sure that discipline is part of our lives. And then we must ensure that our heart is guarded. David wrote, I will not merely walk, but run in the way of your commandments when you give me a heart that is willing. So seek God that you might have a willing heart, a heart that has your will fully committed to Jesus. And then you will understand the wisdom of love that comes to us from the Song of Songs. And there you have the wisdom for today. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow for more wisdom from the Song of Songs.